In the last video, I told you about k-means and how it is used to find centroids. But I didn't really tell you how to initialize it, right? The algorithm has to start from some configuration of k representatives, and then it improves from there. So, in fact, the choice of the initial representative can be quite important. So I'll tell you about two ways to make this choice. So the simple initialization is you basically just take, um, uh, you choose k points of the data points independently at random with a uniform distribution. The problem in this case is that some representatives might be close to each other and parts of the data might have no representative. Especially we will get representative close to each other if there is some small region of the space that has a very high probability and a very large number of points. So that brings us to k-means++, plus plus, which is a different and better method to initialize k-means. Um, it spreads out the initial representatives. And the way that it works is you add representative one by one. And before adding each representative, you define a distribution over the unselected data points. So let's say that the data is x1 to xn, and we have as current representative r1 to rj. We define the distance of, the, of an example to the representatives to be simply the minimum distance of that example to any one of the representatives. OK, so it's just the minimum distance. Uh, basically, this is the point it would be assigned to. And then we do this following interesting thing. We basically um, choose um, a point at random, but not using a uniform distribution, but rather using a distribution where the probability of an example is um, proportional to the distance square from the current set of representatives. Why does this make sense? Because it gives us um, a good chance to choose points that are far from each other. And um, um, every time that we get a point, we see if it's far from all of the other ones from before. But it is not as extreme as just taking the maximal distance point, because the maximal distance point is very likely to be an outlier. So here is an example of what k means will not do. Uh, basically, if I have uh, an example here, let's say this centroid chosen, then the probability for the red um, representative is much higher with these points over here because they are significantly further from the green one than these points. Next, let's talk a little bit about how you can parallelize k-means. So you can find k-means as a function in Spark. And um, the way that um, it parallelizes the search process is uh, quite simple and works as follows. So let's say that we have the data points, and we have a lot of data, so we're partitioning it across uh, several machines. And we want to perform the A-B steps, like the mean and the the, the association with the center and then taking the mean, and association with the center and taking the mean. OK? So the idea is that you choose the initial representatives, maybe using k-means++, plus plus, and you broadcast them to all of the machines. OK? So now all of the machines have the same representatives. Now each machine partitions its own data according to the closest representative. So then you have a key value pair, where the key is the index of the closest representative, and the value is the particular example. And then you use reduce by key to um, basically sum the examples from each one of the uh, sets that are associated with the, with the current representative. And, um, and that reduced by key will give you the new means, which are the new representatives. OK? So the reduced by key will basically give you um, one vector for each one of the k centers. And then those k, um, k centers will be distributed to all of the machines for the next iteration. So this basically is a data partitioning scheme 
where the same operation is done in parallel in all of the machines, but um, it is using different data in each machine. So to summarize this one, uh, I would just say that um, you have different initialization methods, the simple initialization and the newer initialization with k-means++ plus plus that tends to choose a better initial set. And to parallelize k-mean, you have uh, computers that have the same set of representatives, but each one of them has a different subset of the data. So um, that is um, what I'm going to tell you about initialization and parallelization. And um, that, I think, will be uh, it for today. We'll continue next time uh, with other material.